All right, so tonight the soap dispenser saga continues. In this particular case, we have a Bazeus unit which uh, has also crapped itself out before the one year mark. Uh, so yeah, basically humanity's quest for actually producing a soap dispenser for the domestic market, which does not die in like two months, continues. Uh, so this one has batteries in it. They should be full. The touch sensor doesn't work particularly well. Like, I mean, I'm not sure what exactly is going on here, but all right. So technically it's on, and but it doesn't do anything, right? It's a bit nicer to open than the Xiaomi one I just looked at. So this just clips on pretty mm, loosely, I'd say. Uh, has some screws, so uh, I suppose let's take those out. Okay. So this release is not much. But yeah, okay. This hose inside was connected to the pump, I disconnected it, so... This uh, thus far is looking fine. They actually... PCB seems to be a bit more densely populated than the Xiaomi one. Let me see if I can bring it up close and then I'll uh, try and add a picture of that one in post. So this one looks like this. Okay. Um, what do I want to do? So in this case, I would actually want to find a way to probe, probe the signals and see if it is actually looking for stuff. Uh, check its behavior on that front. Uh, suppose we could disconnect power at least when we're poking about. It's pretty cool that this one also is labeled, right? I'm kind of, kind of enjoying that. What does shut and low mean? Anyway, well, uh, we'll just hook on to the transmit ones. And, um, and see what where that brings us. All right, so this does actually seem to be doing something. Let's see if we pause it. All right, it does stop. Let's see if we start it back up. Come on. Here we go. So it is actually sending pulses out. They do look kind of, kind of weird. I have to say, so we're on uh, two volts per division. So that's quite a lot. Single shot capture that. And uh, yeah, it's actually a series of pulses, which is uh, quite interesting. So let me Alright, so this kind of looks like a series of pulses, which, yeah, I don't know, I've never seen anything like this. I don't know exactly what, what and why this is like that, but um, they're driving the LED quite weirdly. So let's actually probe the receiving end and see if it actually changes depending on how close we are to the sensor. I mean, that still doesn't tell us anything specific. It could just be outside of the bounds of its detection. But, uh, yeah. It uh, didn't seem to, uh, to react in any way when we came close, right? So it was still driving the LED as if nothing happened. All right, so let's see what's happening on the receiving end. Right, so we seem to be seeing those spikes as before and are they changing based on I know I really don't know
All right, so after quite some uh, quite some fucking around, I think I saw what the problem is. Um, so what I've done is I've disconnected, unglued actually this uh, transmit receiver module, and it really smells like soap, right? It smells aggressively like soap, and. Uh, I saw some white residue right over here, right? It, it seemed that one of the test points was, you can see this one is super silver. This one's going on to be quite, uh, quite golden. And this is kind of black. So this seems to have gotten completely eaten away. Right, I'll try and zoom in so you guys can see exactly exactly what this looks like and uh, what we'll end up doing is um yeah this is not looking fine so we'll just have to redo this is just the uh, the glue we'll just have to redo these traces and see if uh see if that fixes the problem actually or we just add some solder i don't know We'll see exactly how I get that done, but um, that needs to happen right now. No questions asked. All right, so after a little consideration, I have unanimously decided to uh, basically redo these tracks in um, magnet wire. And so that's what I'm going to do now, and we're going to be back once this is done. And the thing will obviously work. I mean, it's clearly this, but uh, yeah, let's see. Let's see. Optimism is high, though. All right, so bodge work is done. I've um, rerouted all of the traces. Right, the main issue was with the LED because this was actually passing current and this uh, was enough to actually corrode these traces completely. So I don't know, kind of kind of weird, but um, it did happen. Would have lasted a lot longer had it not have had it not had these um, these test pads, but I still think I'm in favor of the test pads. Let's uh, let's just take everything back together and um, see if it does anything. All right, and you can actually see how the water got in. So it um, I'm actually not sure if it got in this way or yeah. Let me. Let's actually take this off and, uh, and investigate. Well, you know, it doesn't look like it came in from here. So it seemed to have just dribbled from the top and made its way around the hot snot. This kind of seems more plausible. And otherwise we would see some ingression on, on this side. Okay. All right, so basically what we have to do now is ensure that this stays completely, completely airtight. Well, I mean watertight, but still. All right, so moment of truth. Let's turn it on. Boom. 
Alright. Why does it not continue working? Now we have to make sure this stays perfectly aligned. Yeah, so right now the main problem will be to get this to actually stick, stick properly onto here. And, uh, and be aligned, right? So this will go in this way, meaning this has to sit like this. Okay, so this was painful. Uh, by no means a work of art, but I've tried to seal this as good as possible. And I've even resorted to adding some sanitary silicone on this end because I just couldn't get the I don't know, couldn't get the proper angle. So as long as it's fine from the top, I don't think it'll wick back up. I mean, we were not that pessimistic. And um, yeah, so the hardest part when doing this is actually getting the board to sit while the hot snot cures. And right, you, you can use a pair of pliers and just get this kind of an angle going and then press on it whilst holding the thing with one hand and then with the other one. It helps having an assistant. Unfortunately, I fired mine. Uh, Harold was a good guy, but I mean, we just, no, yeah, anyway. And um, I think this is actually a bit better than the Xiaomi one. I think this actually self calibrates to a degree. So it's not as fussy uh, with alignment. At any rate, uh, let's see if it works. So let's plug the shit in. And do be careful, right? Do let this set for as long as possible. It's like five degrees outside Celsius. And I've let this cool for about 20 minutes, right? It is very important you let this cure. Otherwise, if you tweak it out of place, it's, it's gonna ruin your day. Okay, so I want to put the battery in last. And it's very nice that they did use different sized uh, connectors. So that's always very welcome. All right, this, this was always finicky. Okay. So I think I fucked it up. Motherfucker. So now it constantly sees something. So I've dropped a bit of glue in there and it, uh, it fucked it up. Oh my God. That is bad. That is very bad. So if it does this, it means your uh, optical assembly is out of alignment. It is not fine at all. Oh my God. Yeah, so uh, I'm not even sure I'm going to do this today. I'm kind of tired and pissed off, so maybe just we heat it up from the top and then try to try to press it in a bit more, like so. And if that doesn't work, I'll, I'll get back to it tomorrow. I'll have to remove all the hot snot and then start over. Still molten and it will take right, forever to cure back again. Do not use isopropyl alcohol to uh, evaporatively cool this. Isopropanol uh, somehow gets this to detach from stuff, right? Gets uh, hot snot to break off of stuff. So that's uh, definitely not what we want. So after quite a bit of trial and error, 
I have gotten this to fire decisively. And one more thing I do want to point out is that, right, even though it did leak over here, the water did not in any way get into the battery compartment. So that is actually quite nice. And the construction seems to be a bit more simple here. We just have four screws. Right, the Xiaomi one was a bit more more difficult to open up. But yeah, so at this point, I'm uh, satisfied enough. So I'll let this completely cure, just to make sure it doesn't like uh, wiggle itself back into a bad position. But thus far, uh, I am quite satisfied. So I'm going to call this a fix. And uh, I will actually be getting another one of these in uh, re uh, briefly. So I have two friends that had them. Both have died. This one I saved. It's the turn of the other one. Let's see if it has the same failure mode. Because if it does, then yeah, we at least know what the procedure is. Um, but apart from this, hope this helped and have a good one.